Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, your news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. A major renovation of the J.C. Nichols Memorial Fountain is currently underway. The iconic horse statues that surround the fountain have been removed so that the fountain can be cleaned and the concrete base is repaired. In addition, the project will restore the fourth dolphin, which was originally missing from the fountain when it was installed near the plaza in 1960. One of the other things that we are going to do in this renovation is take the opportunity to restore the fourth dolphin, which was missing when the sculptures were originally brought to Kansas City, and a replacement piece was put in the fountain. And so we have recently been able to acquire the original fourth dolphin, and we're going to be able to put that back into the fountain with this restoration. The piece that has been in the fountain for the last 50-something years will be placed on a pedestal nearby so that it'll still be related to the fountain where it has been sitting all of its life. The city's focus on new and green solutions wins another award. December 5th, the Mid-America Regional Council recognized the Water Services Department as a sustainable success story. The program recognizes projects that advance the three pillars of sustainability, social equity, economic vitality, and environmental stewardship. The honor goes to the Middle Blue River Basin Green Solutions Pilot Project. It's the nation's first green infrastructure project to reduce combined sewer overflows. Improvements include rain gardens, bioretention basins, and porous sidewalks, all located in the public right-of-way. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, I'm Janet O'Hagan with the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, bringing you holiday greetings and wishing you a happy new year. January is cold in Kansas City, but it's warming up in Bartle Hall with opportunities to come inside and enjoy many events for all ages. The 2015 Mid-America RV Show rolls into Bartle Hall January 15th through 18th and is the largest consumer show dedicated to the RVing lifestyle and everything associated with it, like traveling and outdoor activities in the Midwest. The RVing enthusiasts can check out the newest products and services on the market. Whether you're in the market for a motorhome, custom motor coach, travel trailer, fifth wheel, or camper, you'll find it at the Mid-America RV Show. For additional information, go to gsevents.com. Your outdoor adventures begin. Enjoy four days of boating and outdoor fun at the Kansas City Boat and Sports Show, January 22nd through 25th. Whether you're an avid outdoorsman or just looking for a way to escape winter for the day, this is your show. This annual four-day event turns Bartle Hall into a one-stop marketplace for outdoor fun. For show hours and ticketing information, go to KansasCitySportsShow.com. Join us for the 2015 Royals Fan Fest on Friday, January 30th, and Saturday, January 31st, at the Convention Center's Bartle Hall. The event will feature autograph sessions with current and former Royals, interactive games for fans of all ages, main stage programming, and more. A portion of the proceeds will again benefit Royals Charities. For additional information, go to royals.com FamFest. To learn about more events taking place at the Kansas City and Entertainment Facilities, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. Good evening, uh, my name is Mark McHenry with the KC Parks and Recreation Department. We're glad to be your host this evening for a 20 year celebration from the Shoal Creek TIF. And I believe we've had about 15 miles of road build up here, that's streets, boulevards, and parkways since 1994. Developers tended to buy ground 200 yards away from an arterial. And the whole purpose was that they would build their subdivision, whether it was commercial or retail, uh, or, or houses, and they would build 200 yards away so they didn't have to build that arterial. And one of the things that this TIF plan did was it said, we're going to build the arterials uh, that, so that the people can get to the 
the retail, people can get to the commercial uh, on a nice four-lane street, and, and until that time, the city did a lot else, so they just didn't have the authority or the money to do it. Now they got the money. Uh, Scott and I are the new kids on the block. Uh, we've only been on the council three years, so uh, we can't take credit for having a lot to do with what's been achieved up here. Uh, but one of the things that, uh, uh, that we were consistently, as we sought city council office, was the liabilities of, of TIFs and what's wrong with TIFs and why we shouldn't do them. I think this is the uh, uh, example for what TIFs can do for a city. There isn't a TIF anywhere that's achieved more for a city done a better job of encouraging development, done a better job of influencing the community around it than the Show Creek TIF. So what a great example that TIF can work, TIF does work when city officials and TIF commissioners get together and find ways to make it a success. Um, Dick talked a lot about uh, the future and there is a future even though I think there is sometimes fear that as uh, pieces of the TIF begin to roll off, what happens next? Well, we are talking about that. We are trying to figure out what that is. Because, if anything, the last census proved the success of the Shoal Creek TIF and what it has done for the Northland and what it continues to do. But uh, it goes to prove that this TIF continues to be a success because of the vision of all of you in this room who looked at what was possible and decided to make that happen. We have you to thank for it. Uh, we have an opportunity to do several projects. We continue to move those projects along, and we continue to see new, new developments coming. So there is, you know, I, I, I sometimes expect this to be a wake in some respects, but it's not because the, the TIF is alive and well, and projects can continue to happen. I was given all these numbers to throw at you, but our building permits just within the Shoal Creek TIF um, have gone up. Oh, let's see. Let me get them right here. In 94, 140 permits, and in 2012, there was tw over 2,500 permits. 24% of all of Kansas City, Missouri's permits were produced right in this TIF. Uh, Liberty School District has seen a significant um, increase in their students and population, um, and the Shoal Creek TIF population from 94 was 1,743, and in 2010, you're at 15,000. That has been an 800% increase in population. So if you don't believe in the TIF tool, you need to look just at this particular project and know that when we invest in our infrastructure, that then the development comes. So good job for the visionaries, for your early politicians and TIF leaders uh, for having that vision, because sometimes not everyone gets it and you can see the future and you are now in your future. The City Communications Office, in true Kansas City entrepreneurial spirit, took advantage of the recent wave of blue pride during the Royals World Series run. After the Mayor and City Council renamed Baltimore Avenue as Royals Avenue during the playoffs, our office created Royals Avenue Souvenir Street Signs. Thousands of dedicated Royals fans have purchased the signs and a portion of the proceeds benefits the RBI Youth Urban Baseball Program. Signs are still available on a first-come, first-served basis for $30 each, cash only. If you would like one or more, come to the City Communications Office on the 21st floor of City Hall during regular business hours. As we approach the Christmas and New Year's holidays, there's some information that you should know. City offices and the 311 call center will be closed on Thursday, December 25th and Thursday, January 1st. Also, curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day, both weeks, for some residents. In addition, the week following Christmas is a trash amnesty period in the city. That means during this week, residents may set out up to 15 bags of trash without needing those extra tags. No hazardous waste, bulky items, or leaf and brush will be collected during that time. For more information about these stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for the weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.